Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode 72 of Backcap, the TF2 news and recap show with highlights taken from casts on TeamFortress.tv. I'm Kami, your host for this week, and we'll be covering the happenings from the past two weeks, along with the match results and highlights from July 15th to the 29th. Since there wasn't that much to cover last week, we decided to roll everything together with this week's news for a full-sized episode for you to enjoy. Since we last talked, Lopander announced their fundraiser for i61, Faint Gaming got a new pocket, and Descent is looking to scale new heights over in Europe. The European gimmick kings, Lopander, are looking for financial assistance to attend i61 this August. They're looking to raise at least £666 to cover travel costs for Mr. Epic and Ubers who are coming from Russia and Latvia, respectively, but if they can raise £999, they will also be able to cover their PC rental costs for the event. At the time of this episode's writing, they have raised £711.36, but if you are still interested in donating, check out Hildreth's post on TFTV. Faint Gaming's pocket, Goldfish, has left the team due to scheduling conflicts which prevent him from continuing to play for the rest of the season. With their playoff spot on the line, Faint have picked up Evil Mr. Muffins, who previously played an invite on Scout with Running With Caesars and ChampGG.8K. Only a few weeks after their acquisition of the EVL gaming roster in North America, Ascent has picked up another team, this time with their sights set on I-61. Ascent.eu is the new name of the unexpected roster, which features Sorex and Credo on Scout, Samski on Roamer and Polygon on Pocket, Adiski on Demo, and Babs on Medic. On Twitter, Ascent also confirmed that this sponsorship will continue for the ETF2L season following I-61. There are lots of match results to get through, so we'll get you caught up as fast as possible. Froyotech got revenge for their loss earlier in the season to Ascent with a 5-2 victory on Granary. With Garbuglio in as a sub for Marmalou, Velocity Esports took a 5-2 win over Faint Gaming. Faint bounced back with a 5-1 victory in their next match against Lunatic. That concludes Week 7, and the next two matches are from Week 8 of ESEA. No Mercy dashed to meet Market's hopes of playoffs with a strong 5-1 showing on Metalworks. Velocity was able to secure two rounds against Froyo, but not the win as Froyo took the game 5-2. Now, let's take a look at the playoff projections. Currently, Froyo Tech, No Mercy, and Ascent have locked in their playoff spots, but seeding is not yet determined. Faint Gaming hold on to fourth going into the final week of matches, but they are not yet in the money. The sixth place Meat Market play both the fourth place Faint and the fifth place Velocity this week. If either Faint or Velocity beat Meat Market and the other team loses, the winner will make playoffs. If they both win, then they will tie, and the team with the most rounds won will take the final spot. If they both lose, then Meat Market would have a chance in a three-way tie, but after garnering only one round against No Mercy, it would be just another tie between Faint and Velocity. While ESEA still has a week of regular season play left, ETF2L and Ozfortress have already moved into the postseason. We'll start with the ETF2L Season 27 playoffs. In the upper bracket finals, Lopander took Product in a close 3-2 over 7. 7 evened the score with a 2-1 on Gullywash before the final map of Badlands, which was decided with a 2-1 Golden Cap victory in favor of the returning champs. In the first round of the loser's bracket, Arctic Foxes beat LEGO by win difference in two maps. They moved on to play Lopander in the loser's finals. Again, Arctic Foxes defeated their foes in two maps, though Lopander put up a bit more of a fight. Gullywash was a 6-3 and Process a 3-2 with a golden cap. Seven were waiting for the Foxes in the grand finals. Since Seven came in from winner's side, they had a one-map advantage in the finals and only had to win two out of four maps, while Arctic Foxes had to win three out of four. Arctic Foxes carried the momentum from their loser's bracket run with a dominant 5-0 on Gullywash. Seven was still reeling on Badlands, and Arctic Foxes picked up another win 4-1. Process came down to a golden cap after four tense rounds. Arctic Foxes walked away with a 3-2 victory and claimed to the title as best in Europe. We would be remiss if we did not mention that Arctic Foxes were fielding Silentes and Ali as mercs for the finals. Though Arctic Foxes have disbanded after their victory, Raptor, Ali, and Silentes will be attending I-61 as part of Team Swift. Oz Fortress playoffs are up next. The upper page playoff game between Jasmine T and No Safe Word ended in the same way their regular season meeting did. Jasmine took Snakewater by round difference 6-1 and Reckoner in a 3-1 as time expired. No Safe Word moved down to face Right Wing Death Squad in the semifinals. No Safe Word were quick to dismantle Right Wing Death Squad in two 5-0 victories on Process and Badlands. Thus, they secured their rematch with Jasmine T in a best of five finals. Jasmine took map one in Snakewater with a 3-2. No Safe Word answered with a win of their own on their own map pick with a 4-3 on Process. Jasmine turned up the heat in response with a 5-0 on Badlands to take the game to match point. Granary then went the distance in a 5-4 slugfest that ended in favor of Jasmine T, who will be crowned repeat champions of Oz Fortress. Well, 
That was a lot of words, but now we'll let the frags speak for themselves. Push into a full stronghold like this, so really active plays coming out on the side of Arctic Foxes, and I think it's the Mirage show right now. We need to watch him. Yeah, I think it oh! definitely is. <laughs> and he gets banned. As soon as you see it's the Mirage Shows, he instantly gets that pick, and that is definitely the pick that Arctic Foxes wanted for. <laughs> yeah, Dolly, big brain there coming out. And Arctic Foxes coming in using that Uber, take down the Sentry Gun and Ubers, and now it's uh, Hildreth actually gets a double kill with his Sticky Trap. But I don't think it's going to be enough. The Arctic Fox is just playing the point, but now it's just Eames and Raptor, and somehow they've not uh, cleaned up this push a lot. Oh my god, both the scouts are going down to such low HP. Those pipes, he wants to say it the safest he can be, but Mookie is certainly not safe. He is splattered on the floor, he's dead, and Tiger falls as a refrag. But speaking of falling, Ubers is going to fall as well. Two picks on the side of Arctic Foxes, and they could work off this. Eames is hungry, he wants to go, and Mirage, the third drop, the hat trick takes down Fanny with another drop. He is ungodly. This is crazy. I don't know how Fanny has just been getting caught off in the worst possible position. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another hurt sniper or even a geo sniper at this stage because like, it's wow, uh... what a prediction there, Sage. <laughs> prediction was crazy there, Sage. He's a god. So we're going to see what happens here. Uh, is he's going to push up to the, for the rest of his team. No save for it. It's just stuck in the RIT right now. Here we go. Geo's time to shine. He gets a headshot onto Yul. Nice headshot from him. That's what he needs to be doing for this mid fight. No safer getting aggressive onto the JT combo here through choke now. And he's uh, just going to pop the Ubers off. And clearly, no safer are going to have to get out of there as the JT aggression is going to come in return. Enroth going down to Elmo as Geo's got a, a, he's got a great angle onto the combo. Takes down TJ. Takes down the Rock as well as he's trying to get out through IT. Probably thought he was safe. But I don't think he could be. An SMG kill onto Hertz just picks him off. Jonas is running through Valley. He's got Yul chasing after him. He's actually got away from the players. He's completely juked them. He's hiding that can't he's happen. waiting for players. There's no way he can down here. He no. needs to get out now, though. He needs to leave now. Oh my god! Jono is Jesus! Jono is literally <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Jono. It was all a trick. I have deceived you. <laughs> Not too much about him on Sniper, but maybe we should have given him some more credit because that was absolutely huge. Tiger's going to go in behind here, gets taken down by Cadiz, and uh, this is just looking like a safe push out here from Seven. They're just going to leave a single soldier on last. Here they go. They're going to have the high ground. Uh -huh. uh, they just want to protect Raymond as much as possible while they do this push. Oh, oh, they mark it going oh. from BD5F out of nowhere. Too much wow. with this. He's trying to get onto Raymond, but Raymond's got the health kit and he's got all the time in the world. He does end up hopping because they have caught Salantis in the lobby, and now they're going to be taking the Uber in. Captain and Cadis coming in on the left side. Damage onto Raptor. Ali's caught off. He gets a really nice arrow, but Thalash on a four killing spree gets a shot onto DD. There's only a level one sentry. Cadis is committed so deep for Raptor, but he gets sawed, and this should be a cancelled push if wow. I've seen one. Here comes Drag, jumps in very aggressively. He will take down Salantis along with Captain. But that is just absolutely enormous. Uh, scout in the uh, sky. Both Maris medics takes down one, but we'll go down. Both medics died. Captain's on the point, but the spawners have come back in, and they're going to be able to defend this after. I, I don't. Oh my god! god. Yeah, okay. And he gets oh, it. What? Oh Jesus. my actual! That's incredible. That's insane. That's in that. Go for last. Raptor hasn't been building at all, so it's yeah, going to be like, a long time before they get. Tiger's in a really interesting position in PC. He's lining up a sightline. Gets Raymond. Oh out my of god! Nowhere. That was a. When do you see people remaining. hiding on sniper? Yeah, there's two minutes remaining, so that's a really clever play, and uh, that's gonna definitely open it up for them to actually be able to push back out here. They're almost certainly gonna get second here, but it, it's still a very difficult push to pull off here. And there's a scout threatening the back up here. Raymer goes down again. Tiger. Oh my god, this is getting embarrassing. But like once again, it's just gonna open up the door even further than it already was. And there's still a, one scout behind. No, he, he's, he's long died. And let's see. Uh, Tiger's in. He gets Raymond a third <laughs> time with the body shot. The flank sniper out of nowhere. Tiger, what a miracle life with three medic picks with the body shot. fast. So is Ali. They're both going to do like uh, the mid air sticky surf jump. That's super difficult to do and looks very, very awesome. They both kind of steal the mid kit and then just going to wait for an arrow from their medic. But, uh, I think we're going to wait for some soldiers to jump in. There goes the seventh. They're going to make the first move here. So Len is going to counter bomb. Now he's going to go in very aggressively onto them. And all of a sudden, all of seven are just completely collapsing 
Oh my god, what a white. His team is doing a really good job of just moving forward here and, and getting space for him to just do work. And at some point, like, you just know that a headshot's gonna ring out. But he's doing a really good job of denying the point, though. And, like, oh, oh my god. Mr. Hunt did it again, Sam Z! Oh my god! That's unreal. Just be there. Just for no reason. That's crazy. Absolutely insane. He was left in the air to hang, gets taken down by Mookie. And uh, now the rest of the uh, Swift, they're moving in very aggressively. Ali gets taken down. No, he keeps doing it. Oh. Come on, stop it right now. Please. He gets another two frags. He's unstoppable right now. Thanks for bearing with us as we tried something new with a double episode. Episodes of Backcap will still be coming out weekly, but if there is a lack of content one week, we'll likely hold off and release a double stuffed episode a week later. We'll keep you informed via Twitter, so follow us at Backcap Team for more updates and let us know if you liked this kind of format. Thank you, as ever, for watching, and we'll see you next time.